today we're going to talk about optimization problems. An optimization problem is one in which we are trying to find the maximum or minimum possible quantity of some situation. So we're going to start out with a pretty simple example here. And optimization problems are actually used in real life all the time. There, You can get a major in being an, uh, an optimization expert. And uh, for example, if you work for FedEx, you want to find the maximum profit for the minimum cost. And you want to optimize the time in the air for your, air, your packages. And you want to optimi optimize the route. And you want to optimize um, the number of times packages are handled. So there's all kinds of um, in civil engineering, in business, there's all kinds of things where you want to find the fastest way, the shortest way, the most profitable way to do something. So you're trying to find the maximum or minimum of something. So this is a very simple, basic example of a, of a problem that has, type of problem that has widespread application. So we're going to look first at a rectangle. A rectangle centered at the origin is inscribed in an ellipse. Inscribed means that each of its vertices are touching the ellipse. They are on the ellipse. So they share these four points in common. In particular, we have a, P, a point P here that we're going to call uh, label XY. has coordinates XY. Assuming that the vertices of the ellipse can move anywhere on the ellipse, what are the dimensions of the rectangle which has the maximum area? So we're going to look um, at a little animation that will help um, explain that. We have here um, an Inspire file that has a rectangle inscribed in an ellipse. And so I'm going to show what can happen if we move the point x, y around. So we could make a really small, thin strip of a uh, rectangle here, kind of like a, I don't know, just narrow box here. We can, uh, as we move the point x, y around, we can get a box that is more square in dimensions, and then we can have a tall, skinny box. Um, what would happen if I move the point all the way down to the x-axis? What would the area of the box be? Well, the area would just be, I don't think I can actually do it physically, but the area would be zero because the box would have length but no height. Or I think we can actually see it over here if we move it on to the axis here. There's. Um, a box that is no longer a box has no area whatsoever. And then if we moved it over here, we don't. Um, it would actually still create the same box. So basically, every possible shape box can be formed by just moving the point x, y in the first quadrant. So I have all the way from all these different shapes. So the question is, which one of those shapes is the maximum? So let's look at how we can approach this problem. So what you'll notice here is we have the equation of the ellipse. So um, let's assume that our ellipse has this equation, x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. And so you guys know that we should graph that by going out 5 in the x direction and 3 in the y direction and drawing an ellipse to the best of your ability. And my ability might be better than yours because I've had a little more practice at this. Oh my word. That's one of the best lips I've ever drawn. I think I should give myself a round of applause. Yay, Mrs. Taylor. OK, what is the max? Oh, I need to draw a, a rectangle in here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm deliberately not drawing it any place in particular. Like I'm not trying to draw it. And I just didn't really draw that very well. I think I'm going to uh, undo that a little bit. Um, there we go. That looks a little better. I'm deliberately trying not to draw it on a particular point because I want you to recognize that there is not a particular x, y value that I'm drawing. That this, this point x, y can represent any point in the first quadrant that I could slide this rectangle around like I did in the, in the dramatization I just did or the demonstration. And so it could represent any of the possible rectangles that fit in this ellipse. So the question is, what is the maximum area? So we've actually done step one. Uh, we've drawn the ellipse, the inscribed rectangle. We've labeled the corner point where the rectangle touches the ellipse as x, y. Recognize that the point x, y is on both the rectangle and the ellipse. Now step two is to write a formula for the area of the rectangle in terms of x and y. So you know that area is equal to length times width. 
or base times height or however you want to express that. In other words, I need to know this dimension and this dimension. I need to know the two sides. Well, if this point is the point x, y, then we know this distance from, from the center in the x direction is x, and this distance from the x-axis up to the point is y. So if I want to find the dimensions of the rectangle, I have to recognize that the width of the rectangle is 2x and the height is 2y. So the area is going to be 2x times 2y or 4xy. So area is equal to 4xy. Now if I wanted to figure out what the maximum area is, one of the things I could do is play around with some numbers. I could put in some different values for x and y and figure out what the area is, but how do I find those values? Because I can't just put any old values for x and y because y depends on x because y has to be a point on the ellipse. So there's not really a good trial and error way to do this. What I need to do it is I need an algebraic approach. So what I have to recognize is that at point x, y is not only a point on the, the, the corner of the box, but it's also a point on the ellipse. So if I know what x is, I can write y in terms of x. In other words, I can take this equation of the ellipse and solve it for y and know that if x is a certain number, then I know what y is going to be. So I'm going to write a formula for the area as a function of x only. So first of all, I use my equation x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1, and I want to solve it for y. So I have y squared over 9 equals 1 minus x squared over 25. Then I multiply through by 9. This should look familiar because you did this um, on a worksheet not too long ago. 1 minus x squared over 25. I could also say 9 minus 9x squared over 25. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 9x squared over 25. Or you could leave it as 9 times the quantity. It's just that it's easier to type in your calculator with less parentheses, so I like to do this. Now I want to substitute that expression now into the area formula. I know that, I know that x is just still x, but I can write y in terms of x. So area now is equal to 4xy, but I'm going to take all of this and substitute it for y. So area is now equal to 4x times the quantity. Now notice I sort of left the plus and minus off, and the reason I left the plus and minus off is because when I'm talking about area, I don't really need a negative value to represent one of my sides. So I'm just going to use the positive value of the square root. So area is 4x times 9 minus 9x squared over 25. So on our calculator, area is going to become our function. So we're going to say f1 of x on the calculator is equal to 4x times the square root of 9 minus 9x squared over 25. If you're working with an 84 calculator, the, the, this will say y1, so your area actually becomes, uh, is called y on the calculator. That is not to be confused with this y. The y on your calculator will represent area. And I like the fact that the uh, Inspire uses the function notation. It's a little less confusing that way. Um, so we need to graph this function. I want to find the maximum area and the value of x at which it, occur, at which it occurs using the function. So let's graph this on the calculator. So I'm going to actually open a new document for mine so that I can... Okay, I'm going to add a graphs page and I'm going to type in um, 4 times x Oh, not plus, delete that, times the square root of 9 minus 9x squared. Ah, sorry about that, chief. I just did that wrong. 9 
x squared divided by 25. Okay, and if I graph that, oh, that's interesting. I get kind of, some of it goes down and some of it goes up, and I'm going to kind of move this out of the way here. Now, what part of this graph am I interested in? Let's go back and look at our document for just a moment. And let's look, what values of x am I interested in? The biggest that x can get is 1, 2, 3, 5. And the smallest that x can get is 0. If I, if I make x go from 0 to 5, I'll get every possible rectangle. So that's really all I'm interested. And of course, I want to know all the values of y, so I need to see what the top of the graph looks like. So let's change uh, my window settings here. Let's change this one to 0, because I don't really need to see any negative values. Remember, if you push tab, you can kind of go around here. Now, I need to see the top of the graph. It's, uh, I don't know what the top of the graph is, so let me just kind of take a shot. It looks like it's going up there for a while, so let me put in like 30 or something. And we'll see if that's big enough. Oh, it's just barely big enough. I probably want to put a little bit more. And then for my uh, value, my x value, let me just put in 7. So, um, there, so I have a little extra space there. I think I'm going to go up and change my y value and make it a little taller so that um, I can see better. Let me backspace and make that 40. I think 40 would work a little better. There we go. And there's my, my equation. Now what I want to find out is the maximum value for x. Well, the maximum value clearly occurs right up here, so I need to find that. How do I find maximum value in the calculator? We'll go to Menu and go to Analyze Graph. Analyze Graph says Maximum. Now what you have here is a dotted line, and what you want to do with your dotted line is you're going to take your arrow key and you're going to move, and you might even be able to drag that. Nope, that's just dragging the graph. Never mind. Oh, I'm going to have to start over. Let me escape out of here. I, I wasn't sure how to move it. I think you have to move it with your arrow key, so let me try again. So menu, analyze graph, maximum. Now we're going to take my arrow key, and I'm going to move the cursor until that dotted line is to the left of my maximum point. So I can tell just a little left. Push enter. And then, hmm, obviously need a little help with this one. So let me try this again. Guess we're learning how to do this one together. Maximum. Okay. Oh. I want to grab this little line. Okay. Ah. Kind of moved it. I found the maximum, I think. Not quite sure how I did it, though. I think we'll have to practice this one a little bit more. I think I'm going to try one more time just to do it. Menu, Analyze, Graph, Maximum. Okay. It looks like I can take my cursor and move it, and maybe if I push Enter or maybe kind of click on the click pad. Ah, and then move my cursor over to the right and click on the click pad again, then it finds the maximum. I think that's, um, I'm working on the calculator on the computer, so it's a little more difficult to, to do that. So what did, what did I find out? I found out that when x is 3.54, the area, the maximum, is 30. So the maximum area of this inscribed rectangle occurs when x is 3.54 and it's 30. So if we go back and look, um, I think I'm going to drag this picture into my document. Oh, there we go. I will kind of move this down here. Okay. So you can see I have trouble with the calculator sometimes too. So we have, um, it says write a sentence solution and draw the solution on the graph. So what I wanted you to do, since you can't drag this over, is I want you to actually draw a graph that looks like this. And we have the, uh, this represents the x coordinate of the point, And y represents area. So we have created a function for area. So as we move the, as we change x from 0 to 6, so this is 6 and this is 0, we have, we know that the uh, area that corresponds to 
those x values um, are shown on the graph. So this is the maximum point. This is the point 3.5430. And so the sentence solution, and this is important that you can interpret graphs and interpret solutions correctly, says when x equals 3.54 units, the maximum, let's say the area of the rectangle is at a maximum value of 30 units squared. Okay, that's example one, and I um, make sure if you have any questions about that to ask. Thanks.